Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how you can fade music or sound in and out inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So a couple situations that come to mind is if you're trying to do an intro to your video, but you put a music track directly onto your timeline, a lot of music tracks are going to start way too strong, so you may actually want to fade that in over time. Likewise, if it's at the end of a video, you may want to have it fade out over time. So there is a really easy way to do this inside of DaVinci Resolve. On any audio track, if you hover over it towards the corner, there will be a white notch at the beginning or a white notch at the end. So what you can do with this is actually pull it in in order to fade in or fade out the track over time. So by pulling that white notch over, you can see that it creates a linear slope now. So at the left side of the slope where most of the green audio bar is covered with that shaded dark area, it's going to start at basically 0% audio volume and it's going to fade into the full volume of whatever duration between the start of our clip and wherever we set the white notch to. So likewise, if we went to the end of the clip and we went to the white notch at the end of an audio clip or a music clip, and we pull that inwards, it's going to fade out in exactly the same way, where we'll start at 100% audio, where we set the white notch to, and by the time it gets to the end of the clip, it'll be completely faded out. So something to note when you are dragging this white notch is it will tell you, as you're dragging it, exactly the duration of this fade out or fade in effect. So if I click on this white notch and drag it until I get a one second duration, then that is going to be how long the fade out effect takes. So we can go ahead and quickly play how the intro to this video would sound without the fade in and with the fade in. So without the fade in would be like this. So you can see with this particular track, it generally would be way too strong for the first second of a video. But if I pull over the white notch to two seconds here or something like that, and I go back to the first frame and hit play, then you can get that slow increase of volume rather than a sudden shock with this music track. So another thing that you might want to do when you're editing your audio is to increase or decrease the sound levels at a particular point in the middle of the clip. So the best way to do this is going to be to use keyframes in order to achieve that. So keyframes allow you to set the volume at a particular point in your timeline, and then if you have multiple keyframes, Resolve will automatically animate or change the property over time in order to get from one value to another frame, in order to get from one value to another value over a set duration. Basically, the difference in time between the two keyframes. So if I go a few seconds here before this action moment of the person pouring hot water out of a kettle, as you can see there, um, then I can set the first keyframe. So perhaps I want the volume to be quiet right before that action moment. So I can set a keyframe in the inspector with the audio clip selected by checking the gray by checking the gray diamond to set my first keyframe and then dropping the value in terms of decibels, I believe here, to a lower value. So when you only have one keyframe, it's going to change the value for everything in the track because there's no keyframes for it to animate across. But if I set my second keyframe at this marker I've created, I can change the volume uh, back to zero decibels, basically it's normal volume, and that will animate the volume between these two points. Now likely if you do this, you'll want to create additional keyframe points. So I can go a few seconds after this action moment and set another keyframe. So I'm just going to check the keyframe box to create the keyframe at the same volume. So that will mean that between these two keyframes, the volume's not changing at all. And then go a few frames after that and decrease the volume again. So I'll type in negative 15 here. Note that when you change the value at a different point in the timeline, that keyframe points will get immediately created automatically. So now we have four keyframes making the volume fade in and then fade out after a set duration of time which will give us this result in terms of the audio. Then you can see basically at that action moment, the music gets much louder, which if you spend a little bit more time to make it match the shot a little better and adjust the timing, uh, you might get a cool result and increase the impact of whatever's going on in your video. So if you're going to keyframe the volume on a audio track, you can either do that in conjunction with or exclusively instead of the 
white notch trick that I was talking about at the beginning of the video. So if you leave these keyframes up where this left keyframe is at negative 15 volume and you still have the fade in at the beginning, then that fade in is still going to be fading in to that negative 15 decibels. So the fade in that this notch creates is basically a multiplier on top of whatever volume and other settings you have on the base audio clip. So another way that you can handle this if you still want it to fade into that clip volume of negative 15 would be to remove the white notch and instead create another keyframe point. So with the bottom track selected, you can keyframe at the point where the audio should be completely faded in and then go to the first frame of frame zero and then set the volume to the absolute minimum of negative 100. So playing this back one more time, you can hear that this will give you that same kind of audio fade in that you're looking for. One more situation where you may need to fade your music in or out is when you want to transition from one music track to another music track. So just like with video transitions where you can have it fade from one clip to another clip rather than being a sharp jump cut uh, simply by using one of the video transitions that exist in the effects library. You can also add a audio transition between two clips. So this is basically going to end up being a crossfade where it will start loud with one track and end loud with the other track as one track fades out, the other track fades in. So the simplest way to do this is to right click on the border between two audio clips and then to simply add in a crossfade of the audio with the number of frames you want that to take place over. So if you're running 30 frames per second in your project, then a 30 frame crossfade is going to be a one second transition. So if I pop that in here. Now when you do this, you have to have a little bit of space on either side of the source material for the clips. So you can see here that um, on this right side audio track, the Limit 70 by Kevin MacLeod, it shows as red on the border. That means that we're right at the beginning of that audio track. So we would need to trim clips in order to add this transition in. But if we do that right now, it's also going to be trimming the top clips since those tracks aren't locked. So we're going to cancel and actually just adjust this audio track a bit. So one way that we could handle this to add a little bit of that buffer space at the starting left side of this audio track in the timeline would be to use the blade tool, B on the keyboard, and uh, cut up the audio track so that basically we're just using the part of the music we actually need for the timeline. In a lot of videos, you probably wouldn't actually need the full song to play. So we can just cut away this part, and then we can hit T to go into trim mode, and hover over the audio waveform section of this audio clip, so you'll get arrows in both directions, and if you left click, you can drag to adjust the portion of the music track which you're actually going to be using uh, in the final timeline. So if we add this little buffer to the left of that border, as you can see by this white box that slides to the left and right as I slide left and right with the left mouse button pressed here. So this will add a audio information buffer uh, for the transition that we're going to create. So now that we're not using the very start of the audio clip or the music track, we can easily add in the crossfade with no issues by right clicking uh, on the border between these two clips and adding the 30 frame crossfade. So as long as you have that buffer, you shouldn't get any issues where you're adding this and you shouldn't need to trim the clips. So without that, if we right click on the border, add the 30 frame crossfade and just hit trim clips, you'll see that it slides the top clips over even though the top clips aren't actually directly related to this music track. So another way you can get around that is to simply lock the other audio and video tracks that you don't want to end up involved in this trim by clicking on the lock underneath the V1, A1, and uh, so on and so forth naming of the audio tracks. And now we can right click, go to a 30 frame cross fade, hit trim clips, which will automatically adjust the timing of this music track. Note that if you were specifically trying to have it timed with particular moments in your video clips, that may cause you some issues, so be aware of that. But that will give us our crossfade between one audio track into the other audio track. So now we could go ahead and play this little video clip. And the transition between the two audio tracks is not nearly as bad as it would be if we did not have this crossfade. So to demonstrate that, I can just cut away that crossfade, play it back one more time. 
And you can see that without having a transition between the audio tracks, that moment in time sounds pretty terrible. If you want to make it longer, just try right clicking and adding something like a 60 frame crossfade. You can also find the crossfade effect in audio transitions. So you go up to the effects library up here, audio transitions, and then you can do crossfade. If you want to increase the volume for that crossfade timing, then you can use plus three decibels. If you want to decrease the overall volume, then use minus three decibels. Or if you want to keep the overall audio levels the same, then just use the standard crossfade zero decibels and drag that onto your audio clips, which gives you basically the same result as the right click on the border method. You can also zoom in on the timeline, click on the crossfade effect and increase the duration manually if you so choose. So if we want it to be 60 frames here, I can just double this up by manually typing in 60 frames. So in a nutshell, that's pretty much all you need to know about fading between two audio clips. Uh, like you can use it for music, you could just as easily use it for a voiceover dialogue or sound effects if it suits your purposes for whatever you're trying to create. Though note that not all audio, especially sound of voiceovers, is going to require a crossfade every single time. One last thing for this video, if you want to add a animation curve for how Resolve changes the value of a property between two keyframes, rather than just having a linear progression, you can click on any clip that has keyframes, and on the far right, there'll be this little curve icon. It looks like it's making a hill, and then it drops down with its line, and then makes a bottom hill, kind of hyperbolic in nature. And if you click that to open it up and scroll down a little bit, you'll see it will actually open this curve editor for your keyframes for any property that you've set on that clip. So you can see that the change in the value uh, between any of these two keyframes is currently linear. But you can click on these keyframe points and easily change it into a curve um, like this left one, where you can see that on the left side, it's going to start slow and then end fast as it gets to the right keyframe point. Uh, basically, if it's going up vertically fast, then that means the value is changing fast compared to time because time is the horizontal axis of this graph. So if I uh, click on that left one, so that'll make it so that there is a curve to this. If you hold alt and then middle mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. And basically it'll make the change a little bit slower at the start and then fast at the end. And you can click on these curve handles as well to adjust it. Uh, be careful about messing with that too much though, because if you did something like this, pulling it down, then it would go down in volume and then rapidly up in volume. And you can make some weird things happen that you might not intend. So I would probably just stick to the default values on these curve settings rather than messing with the handles too much. And you might find that it makes your audio transitions a little bit smoother. So let's go ahead and play it back one more time. And you know what, just for fun, let's go ahead and add some well-timed zoom-ins to this video clip to match the music. Okay, so after messing around with the video and audio a little bit, we can give ourselves a result something like this. Still needs a little bit of work, obviously, but hopefully in this video you're getting the grasp of how you can actually fade in the audio in and out for both your music, your sound, and your voice clips. By the way, all of those on the audio timeline, and if it wasn't obvious, it works exactly the same way for each one. Resolve doesn't really distinguish between the music, audio, and voice over clips. At the end of the day, you'd be modifying them in exactly the same way when it comes to the volume levels. So that's gonna be it for this video. I've been Chris, hopefully you guys learned a bit, and I will see you guys in my future video content.